Hey everybody, this is Steve at the Whirly Bogger. We are in deep quarantine. So, we figured we would uh, catch up on some video fly tying here uh, at the pro shop. So over the next week, we're gonna have a bunch of new videos for you uh, every day to uh, keep you from going crazy and driving your wife or your other loved one crazy. So uh, today, I'm gonna tie this March Brown Emerger uh, we're at the end of March here. Yakima River has a famous March Brown hatch. This is a great fly for uh, for the hatch of uh, March Brown mayflies. Hopefully by then the river will be opened up and uh, we'll be able to uh, to uh, use these types of flies. Uh, we're all uh, we're all hoping for the best. So uh, March Brown emerger, uh, real easy, pretty simple fly to tie, but super effective. Uh, I'm going to show you how to whip this one up. Okay, so in order to, uh, to put this fly together, uh, the hook that we're using is a pretty special hook made by Gamagatsu. It's a cripple emerger hook. Fantastic, super sharp, and you can see the, uh, the V-shaped bend uh, for cripple emerger patterns. So C16B is the name of it. This is a size 12. So we're gonna start off by laying a thread base down from the eye all the way back to the band. Always good to start with a, a good foundation of thread that'll keep your fly bound together and uh, just, just makes a more durable fly. So the next thing that you're gonna need is three strands of brown flashaboo, copper, something that's dark in color uh, you know that's going to represent uh, March Brown Mayfly. So get three of those strands, get them, get them tightly together there, and get them get them even on the ends. And then you can just take and lay them right up against the shank. Sometimes if you wet them, it helps them to uh, to stick together a little bit better. Get those tied in and then you can trim off the you can leave it a little long and then once the fly is complete then you can kind of adjust all your your kind of your definitions in the fly get that piece doesn't really want to there we go Okay, and then run your fly, or excuse me, run your thread. Now I'm using a UTC. Uh, this is a brown 140. It's it's a great. It's really become one of my my most favorite threads for tying trout flies. It lays super flat and uh, really nice for building uh, for building trout flies, especially in this size. Um, so the next we're going to use is a uh, is a Hemingway. Synthetic quill in brown. Okay. And this is going to make a nice segmented body. Uh, you can also use a uh, a bia quill if you want to to do this fly. Um, these are just a little bit easier to use and they're a little bit more durable than what the naturals are. And and you really get the same type of look and, and uh, uh, body out of the out of the fly and you as you can see this side goes down and this is a sticky side so there's a little bit of glue on there just so it will uh, adhere to uh, to the body of your fly so you can take and start winding this forward this quill and you can see as you do it starts making that segmented body of what the, the actual mayfly act, you know looks like. Wind that forward 
and then we're going to when we come right to that little the top of the V we're going to we're going to tie it off okay make a few wraps on there and get it bound down and you're going to get three or four different flies out of this quill so you can set that aside for your next one and then back up to the to the top of the V right there so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to coat this body in UV glue just to make it a little bit more durable so all you need is just a just a little drop on there and then take your bodkin and just move it around in there let it absorb a little bit and then take your UV light and then just blast it and that'll give you uh, gives you kind of a shiny look on the body too coats it make make definitely gonna make it more durable for when you're fishing it after you know after several fish have eaten it because I guarantee you they're gonna eat this fly mm. the March brown hatch on the rivers absolutely been my favorite now for over two decades uh, it's our biggest mayfly fly hatch really that we have especially in the spring and it's it's really really pretty exciting Okay, so the next thing that we want to use is a real thin piece, one millimeter foam. Um, and I just cut them in strips. It actually comes in kind of a, a sheet like this. And you can just cut a, cut a strip off of it. And we're going to fold it back on itself to kind of make a loop in the top. And this is going to add some flotation. It's going to keep the fly right in the film, right in the meniscus, right where we want it fishing. A lot of those big fish are, are eating these types of insects right when they're, right when they're just starting to emerge and, and, uh, and come, out of the, uh, come out of the film. So this, this fly is going to ride low down in the film the way it's designed. So it should look like that. Make a, make a few wraps and bind that, bind that foam to the shank and then you can bind it forward and try not to crowd that eye too much. And then secure the foam. Tighten it down and then we can trim off the excess. And when you trim it, you want to leave a little bit of a piece hanging over the front there and that's gonna that's gonna cause it to lift up a little bit and cause a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a wake in in the current kind of like a struggle like the real insect is doing when it's when it's actually trying to emerge out of the out of the film so it's actually gonna help you okay so make sure that's all nice and secure there so next you're gonna need a dubbing loop tool or you're going to need the Mark Pettigean bobbin that I have here. Um, this is actually the the nicest tool I've probably have ever worked with. His Mark Pettigean's tools are are, are very very nice. Um, so what you're going to want to do is create a dubbing loop, okay? And this tool, th this bobbin, just it has a built-in dubbing loop tool along with a thread adjustment tool on it. So it's kind of like three tools in one and uh, it's really become indispensable in my tying. So the next thing that you're going to need is we're going to put a wing on this and we're going to use CDC Tufts and CDC Tufts uh, you know are, are fantastic for creating an air bubble and keeping the, the fly afloat. So they're actually a, a natural floatant. You won't need to put any floatant whatsoever on this fly. So um, you won't need any fly egg or anything like that. So you're going to want to take the puff, spread your dubbing loop thread, and insert your, your first tuft there. You're going to need three tufts. So there's one. This takes a little bit of 
this takes a little bit of patience just you know in between the in between the threads and what I've kind of learned by tying this fly is you can you can use that little stem just to kind of to poke through the wire or through the thread not the wire kind of move them get them get them kind of close in together because you're going to want to trim them too you want you're going to want to get that stem out of there as soon as you get it all complete So it just takes a little bit of a little bit of time to get those in there just like that. And then you can pull pull down a little bit tight on your on your dubbing tool and you can trim the very ends and get that stem out of there. So you just have the CDC material in there. So when that's all ready to go, you can spin your dubbing loop. Once that's complete, it should look like this. So what you've made is that CDC hackle. It's gonna add in flotation and keep that fly right in the film and keep it suspended. So about three or four wraps down completely. And cut your dubbing loop. Get it all nice and secured in there. Okay, so uh, just to finish off this fly, all, all you need to do is just do a whip finish or a half hitch. Do a couple of them so it's nice and secure. Trim your thread off. And then what I like to do is just take a little tiny drop of UV glue, put it on your, on your bodkin, and then just run that over the thread. And then you can just zap it. That'll make it a little bit more durable when, you know, after several fish have eaten it, your fly's gonna still hold together. This fly will get will get soaked up a little bit with water and fish slime, so make sure that you have some desiccant with you. Uh, after it gets soaked, the CDC. Never ever want to put any type of floating on CDC, any kind of silicone floatant or you know, YFG, Flyagra, uh, that'll actually drown the fly. Uh, use a uh, powdered desiccant on that. Will actually renew the fly and you'll, you'll get several, several uses out of it or several days, you know, depending on how, how durable you tie it. So uh, if your tails are a little long, you can trim those at the end. And that's it. That's Yak uh, Yakima River March Brown Emerger. CDC. Mm. Great fly tying material. So that's at quarantine day number two. We'll have uh, more flies coming to you. So uh, keep an eye on the website, whirlybuggerflycompany.com, our YouTube channel, and uh, we'll try and keep you amused. If you uh, like the materials to tie this fly, uh, we're actually taking phone orders at the, uh, at the pro shop, or you'll be able to order everything online, and uh, we'll ship it right out to you. I hope everybody's doing well, and we hope we'll see you all soon.